Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habita fillah I thought it would be beneficial to read from and benefit from some advice from one of our scholars, one of the scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, Sheikh Ibrahim ibn Amr al Rahili, Hafidhallahu Ta'ala, one of the uh, teachers or professors at the Islamic University in Medina, and also uh, a teacher in the Prophet's Masjid, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this treatise, why I felt it was necessary to read from it again, is that the advice that is contained within this treaty still resonates with us. It still has immense value. And that is because the fitna never ceases. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Alaikum bi sunnati wa sunnatu khulafa rashidin al mahdiin The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa rashidin. And he was saying this Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a means of dealing with fitna and dealing with differences. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, prior to that statement in the same hadith, he said, And whoever lives uh, after me will see many differences. And because we live in a time, this was said to the Sahaba radiallahu by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And think about how much time between us and them all the fitna, all the sectarianism, all the breaking into groups in the sects, all the blind following, all the ta'asab and prejudice to leaders and groups and jama'at, all of those things that have taken place since that time, we are in need of this medicine even more so. And so the Sheikh's treaties was an attempt to put these contemporary acts of fitna and discord between Ahlul Sunnah in perspective in the context of the greater picture, but also to offer remedy and to point out the mistakes that are being made, unfortunately, between Ahlul Sunnah often, between Ahlul Sunnah and between those Hizbis which are closest to Ahlul Sunnah, between those Hizbis, those groups, those people who have left Salafia, who are very close to Salafiyyah in many aspects of their Aqidah and of their methodology, but perhaps extremism has taken them uh, perhaps even out of the fold of Salafiyyah because of their blind following to personalities and and uh, taqlid of uh, individuals and particular scholars restricting the da'wah to one or two scholars and writing off the rest of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and many other practices. And perhaps there's another group that has also left the fold of Ahl Sunnah, left the fold of Salafiyyah, because they've totally thrown away the principles and discarded the methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So it's a very dangerous path. The path that we want to traverse is that of the uh, way which is in the middle. And the way that is in the middle is the sunnah. That's what we want to practice. We want to practice the sunnah, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the uh, methodology of the salaf al-salih. So the shaykh began, he said, all praises for Allah, we praise him and we seek his assistance and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from our evil, from the evil of our own souls and the evil of our deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is no one to misguide and whomsoever he misguides, there is no one to uh, guide him. I bear witness that none deserves to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is his slave and final messenger. And then he began with the rest of the khutbah al-hajjah uh, and, and, and the ayat 
where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Yuladina Amanu Ittakullaha Hakku Takatihi Wala Tumutunna illa wa anta Muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah as he deserves to be feared, and do not die except in a state of total submission to him as Muslims. Ya you and Nasa Toko Robukum and Lady Halakum in Nafs in Wahida, Wahalaka in Hazoja, Wabatha, Minhum, Rijal, and Katiru and Nisa, Watakola, Lady Tasa, Luna Bihi, Walaham, in the Law Hakana, Adekum, Rakiba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul and then created from his from him his wife, and from them both spread many men and women. Fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and do not sever the ties with the wombs that bore you. Indeed, Allah is a watcher over you. And Habatifillah, what's worth pointing out is all of these ayat, and when you hear the khutbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the ayats that are being uh, uh, mentioned you are, are calling us to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really, when we're studying this, treaties when we're going through it we need to fear Allah as we do in all situations so that means we have to present the truth to the best of our ability and fearing Allah also should restrain our tongues for those people who are going to criticize that's okay we're open to criticism and as the Prophet said all the children of Adam commit sins and make mistakes and the best of those are those who repent and so with that being the case, it's very important to have knowledge-based dis, uh, discourse, you know, that when we differ over issues, if we based it knowledge-based, many of our problems would be dealt with uh, in a much better fashion. We wouldn't have the splitting. Right now we have splitting between so many personalities, so many scholars, and because of the tongue, some we've known more than one scholar now who uh, is, has been lashed and will be lashed. This is not the tarbiya that we need. The tarbiya that we need, what we need to reform our communities, is a caution with the tongue. And recently, just to give us some relevance in the context, I've only recently uh, delved into social media and opened up a Facebook page. And I see the hatred with so many, uh, so many people have of Salafis. And the statements that they put out there saying, you know, Salafis, the only thing I learned from Salafis is how to curse other Muslims and, uh, you know, other and bad character. You know, these are the, you know, people are putting out very intricate, detailed, nice posts uh, uh, um, with these kind of, uh, with designs and intricate um, graphics, you know, really hitting back at uh, the Dawah to Salafiyah. And that's because it has been misrepresented and has not been properly propagated. And this is not just in the West, this is around the world. Because if you go to many countries, you'll find that people, uh, the common Muslims in many places, they don't really necessarily react well to uh, Salafis and Salafia because they see the many splits and they see that they have not always illustrated the Dawah to Salafia properly by correcting their manners, correcting all the aspects of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu because when we say the Dawah to Salafia, that means we're saying the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah. And that means we're talking about how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, how he uh, illustrated Islam for us. And that is the sunnah, and that's what we're ordered to follow. So that means his manners. The Prophet ﷺ said, The Prophet ﷺ said, There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than good manners. And verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. And how many harms have been caused by wicked and sinful speech? And people are even being punished for that. So it's very important to always maintain the Islamic manners and Islamic adab. And the Islamic manners and adab and uh, statements and aslub 
and way and methodology and aqidah is all the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. It's all a part of the minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. It's all a part of the way of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah and it's the way of the Salafiyin because the Salafiyun are Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah when they are Salafi haqqan, when they're really a Salafi practicing and fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Shaykh mentioned the last uh, uh, ayah, Ya yuladheena amanu wa taqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum ma'amalakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubukum wa man yu'i allaha wa rasooluhu faghad faza fawzan azeema. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you believe, fear Allah and always speak the truth. How many harms come by not speaking the truth? How many people consider themselves doing a reputation and, and lying about people or exaggerating instead of dealing exactly to what they say in the proper context of what they're saying it and using it? Oh, you believe fear Allah and always speak the truth. He will direct you to do righteous good deeds and will forgive you of your sins. Whosoever obeys a law and his messenger, then indeed he has achieved a tremendous achievement. And then the Sheikh said to proceed, Amabad, the obligation of giving nusiha, uh, meaning advice, has necessitated the compilation of the short treaties to advise the youth of Ahl Sunnah in an effort to bring about understanding between them in light of the textual evidences that promote reconciliation. So the purpose of this treatise, the Sheikh was writing to reconcile the discord. And this was written in 2003. And it shows you that a lot of the fitna that we see has been going on long, uh, you know, for a long, long periods of time. And we've seen many splits. We've seen many splits. Many scholars have been taken off the menhaj by other scholars with ease, not with hujja with uh, barhan always. Sometimes it's desire. Sometimes it's just discord between them. So it's very important to have those tools to be able, and that's only going to come through ilm al nafiyah through beneficial knowledge, by studying. Then you'll have some tools to where you can analyze, and then you can see who's right and wrong. You can be able to have an inclination if it's just desires that you see, or someone's being railroaded and ostracized for not following the protocol instead of following and 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 Instead, they were adhering to the menhaj of Ahl Sunnah, or that there's room for differences, or whatever the case may be. There's many different reasons why people have ikhtilaf and have differences. And so it's very important for us to have some understanding of that. And that only comes through ilm al That only comes through doing talib al-ilm. <clears throat> and and talib al-ilm also gives you the tools to where you can distinguish between truth and falsehood. I've had many people criticize me for teaching this uh, years ago and for making open my, uh, and quoting from Sheikh Ibrahim Raheli, the author of this treatise in, in various lectures and so on and so forth. And I dealt with them only in a way that I knew how from studying the issue, from having studied with this sheikh for many years and having read his treaties and having heard what other ulama have said and have heard, heard from the side of his criticizers, from some of them from our, our scholars and having purchased their words and the purchase and, and downloaded and, and compiled the criticisms. And so then that gave me the opportunity to look at what's being said. Is it fair what's being said about him? Is he a mubtadiya or is or should this treatise be warned against or whatever? So then you can make a knowledge-based assessment. And that's all we're asking people to do. Uh, and that is from Dina Nasiha. And the Sheikh then said, uh, th uh, this effort was initiated due to the existence of discord and differing in the issues of Aqidah as well as the moral behavior, adab, and positions taken when dealing with those who oppose Ahl Sunnah. This is something prevalent amongst the Muslim youth in various Islamic countries today, even amongst the Muslim minorities who reside in the lands of the Kuffar, the disbelieving lands. This has resulted in dissension and, and hajr, you know, boycotting of one another, even transgression of the rights of one another amongst Ahl Sunnah which has intensified the fitna between them and increased its seriousness. This type of representation has affected the path that calling people to the sunnah has taken.
meaning the dawah. It has even prevented many people in various countries and localities from embracing this dawah after in inclining towards it. Nonetheless, I will restrict this piece of advice to the following points by which I implore Allah to provide me with ikhlas, meaning sincerity, in my intention, and grant me accuracy in my statements and allows any Muslim who reads it to benefit from it. And this was written in 1424, the 10th month, uh, the eighth day corresponding to the year 2003. So it's very important. The Sheikh uh, began in this introduction to tell us why he wrote this, that it's a, he wanted this to be a means of reconciliation between the youth. And its relevance is relevance not just for the youth, but it's relevant even for the, for the scholars that we see now that many other ulama from Ahl Sunnah have written very beneficial treaties trying to rectify the extremism and the improper conduct that has happened between the youth and even some scholars. And some of the scholars that have tried to deal with this, and many even dealt with this prior, but for some reason that tarbiyah wasn't always carried on to the people. Imam bin Baz, Imam al-Albani, especially Imam al-Albani, you have so much from him, uh, and Ibn Baz, and the examples are countless. Uh, and you have e examples from uh, Ben Othaymin, uh, e immense treasures from him as well, written about these subjects. Sheikh Muqbal also was very, although he had a lot of controversy and was very stern, he also, you know, was a person of justice. And he would speak by justice, and this is my assessment of him, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best to assess. And he was uh, very, uh, what appeared to be immensely sincere, and free from hezbiyah of calling, because what we see now, we have some people who try to use, and uh, use a stern language and, and horrible and horrible statements about people, plain and simple, and going beyond the, the bounds, talking about their character, talking about their families, talking about all kinds of things, and then trying to use as a hujja that this was the way of the Salaf, that we have statements of the Salaf that are harsh. Are those the statements that you want to grab onto? You you really want to grab onto those instead of what the Prophet wasallam, who was known for speaking uh, with gentleness and kindness and being stern in the affairs of the deen, but never going beyond the bounds. Never being uh, what someone could, could call as arrogant or could call as, as hateful and spiteful or could call, you know, referred to as going beyond the bounds. The Prophet wasallam had prophetic hikmah and wisdom and he spoke with, uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't one who cursed people and attacked people and attack their character, and especially without justice. And so that is the reason why I decided that this would be beneficial for us to read through this treatise, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, and bless us to be of uh, benefit to us. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward our shaykh immensely for having written this and for it still having relevance and put it on the scale of his deed, good deeds, I mean, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.